This video will show you how to use emergency paging with a Cisco CME. It would automatically does stuff like this. It'll call in and automatically page for you. So what I've gone and done is set up a all lockdown message. And I've also gone ahead and programmed dial peer into the CME. And then that dial peer talks to the informant cast which then has the dialing configuration set up. You can see that we've got three options here, just one for standard bell. Uh, we have an all lockdown test. You notice in the middle of the screen, it's got test there. That is what we use to record the lockdown message. And then the 99 is the one we use to program and send out. So I'll go ahead and show you what we're gonna do. We've got our messages are all locked down. Normally it's set up for uh, pre-recorded messages there. What we're gonna go and do is change it over to ad hoc. And this will allow us to record the new pre. So what I'll do is I'll dial the We're just going to do a text message here. Again, it's unable to send it to that message because we created the fake distribution group, but it still records the audio. So when we go back in to change it, it'll show up that there's a mess, so many second message. We'll make a change here. That. The other thing we want to change is the rebroadcasting. So in this case, we want it to rebroadcast five mess five times every 60 seconds. But in my case, I'm just going to change this so it doesn't rebroadcast on me and interrupt my video. So I'll update that. You can change it for how long you want it to pause, rebroadcast. So in this case, it's going to be five minutes long of rebroadcasting. So your lockdown might be longer than that. Uh, do not use the rebroadcast until stopped. This will this causes the CME to lock up in our case because we were paging both the phones and the outgoing paging device, which in our case is a TOA 9000. So now that I've got all the settings set back, go back. Looks like that. Pre recorded audio, nine second audio present. We can go ahead and dial that 99 code. Send it out. As you can see, that sent it out. And if we set rebroadcast on, it would send it out again in so many seconds. There wasn't much to do once I figured out that it just needed a SIP trunk in the CME, or in this case, just a SIP dial peer, I should say. We put in the codes, uh, anything five to nine gets sent to the SIP server, or sorry, anything five to nine gets sent to the InformaCast SIP server. And based on our allow settings, it automatically plays. We tried to do the quick page option with the XML that worked for us. Um, however, the services would be set up on all phones and we didn't want the emergency page there. So we went with the dial cast settings. The other settings we did change were in relation to the greetings. Normally, there's a broadcast greeting that comes in that would say, thank you for calling the informant at SIP server. Or I can actually do that for you guys. I'll turn it on right now. And give me a minute here. Go to my voice menus, my call menu. I'm just going to go change that to enable greeting. Again, all this stuff is 
that stuff is in the informant cast help. This basically just shows you how you can set it up using a CME rather than the CUCM, which Informacast only works with. Uh, we have been using their software for a while, and then when 8.1 came out, our CME 2921s were no longer quote-unquote compatible, so we had to use the Informacast HRE mode, and we're also using a LPI for our uh, TOA Bell skit. So I might show you a video on that. I believe I have a blog post as well coming up on how to get the Informacast the both page to the CME phones and the bells at the same time. I believe that is all I have to share with you in this video. Thanks for watching.